Hey, Pre-Sales Collective, it's your host, James Kakis, and today I'm going to be joined by Kiana McCormick, Senior Value Engineer at DocuSign. The topic of today's episode is the why of value engineering. We decided to have this podcast because so many people are talking about value engineering. What is it? How does it fit in the sales cycle? Is that the solutions engineer's responsibility? So in today's episode, we're going to talk about what value engineering means to Kiana, what it means at DocuSign, and talk about what the role is, what it isn't, and how it partners in the customer journey. Enjoy today's episode. Hey, Kiana. Welcome to the Pre-Sales Podcast. How's it going today? Hi, James. Thanks for having me. I am glad to have you. How's your week been? I know. We're going into a three-day weekend and... You know this, but maybe the listeners don't, but it's 2 p.m. right before a three-day weekend. So I'm excited to be doing this, ending the week on a fun note. This is a great way to end the week, Kiana. We're glad to have you on the Pre-Sales Podcast. And you're no stranger to the Pre-Sales Collective. You've been helping out with our WISE program and led our first breather recently. So one, thank you for that. And two, why did you want to bring the WISE breather to the Pre-Sales Collective? So the WISE breather was introduced to DocuSign about a year ago when the mic first started, just as a way to have a break from Zoom fatigue and get together as a women's and solutions engineering community, other than just work-related stuff. So I wanted to bring this to Presales Collective because it was just so successful at DocuSign and really helped give all the women and allies in our group such a chance to connect. Um, then also just, you know, have that breather from work that I wanted to share it. I'm glad you brought it. It was much needed. The chair yoga from Rebecca was fantastic. And the time block on my calendar was so needed. I love that. So for those listening who want more information, can go to presalescollective.com slash wise, and you can learn more about the breather and the breather program. But Kiana, today we're going to talk about value engineering. We need to start with a little bit more about you. Tell us about yourself and tell us how you got into presales. Sure. So I am a senior value engineer. I actually got promoted a couple of weeks ago. I've I've been with DocuSign on the value engineering team for about a year and a half, almost two years now. And I got into pre-sales kind of on accident. I came from Deloitte in consulting in that world. And my now manager actually reached out to me on LinkedIn. So at the time I was about to enter a promotion year and was thinking about what I wanted to do with my career, all of that fun stuff. And I hadn't actually heard about what pre-sales was or value engineering. And honestly, I wasn't really interested in a career in sales, but I just took the call to learn more about the role. And it turned out to be really, really fitting because it was a hybrid between you know my client facing side and project management nature of my current role. And then there were a lot of transferable skills that I figured I could bring to the role and really grow the value engineering team. So prior to DocuSign, I was at Deloitte, as I mentioned. It was in the extended enterprise risk management practice, more specifically in software licensing and contract compliance. So naturally, you know, when DocuSign started expanding at the time, we moved from our typical e-signature platform to having more AI and contract analytics and contract management, it seemed to fit with that background of risk and compliance and contracts. So what was it about DocuSign specifically that really caught your attention? I mean, if you were going in a promo cycle, you liked your role at Deloitte. And this is probably similar yet a little bit different. What was it about the organization that made you say, hey, I could see myself here? I actually hear this a lot about DocuSign. But first of all, I knew what it was. (laughs) I wasn't a stranger to the product or so I thought because I had really only heard about the e-signature platform. I knew that DocuSign was being newly used as a verb, which was really cool to me just as a product. And I just knew that I loved DocuSign. And that's something that was really special that I hear from customers. And I hear from either my friends or family or really anyone I talk to that the term love is used when talking about software. So that was really special to me thinking about moving over from you know the consulting world to what we call industry. And so that was great. It was also right down the street from my apartment at the time, which was great in San Francisco. And it seemed to be a very good fit both on the team and in the company culture with inclusivity and diversity and all of those nuances that really make company great. Thank you for sharing that perspective and that story. 
I'm a fan of DocuSign too, and I like that it's used as a verb. So let's talk about today's topic. This is, again, an interesting one. Today's topic is the why of value engineering. For Freestyle's Collective, we've been hearing so many people say, well, I don't even know what value engineering is, or I don't even know how this fits into the role. And so today's episode, we're going to really dive into that. Let's kind of just hit this to start, Kiana. Can you tell us why value engineering teams exist? Sure. So first, I'll start with that question of you know what value engineering is, and then I'll come back to the question of why it exists. So most people think of ROI when they hear about the term value selling, which is one component of our role, but we more broadly serve our customers and the account team with a strategic consultative role of telling the complete value story. So we do that from a few different VE product offerings, helping guide the value selling messaging, starting with the account strategy, building outside in points of views for customers using industry benchmarks, helping a customer craft a customized business case with their help, helping the account team with showing the ROI in the proposal stage, and then finally rounding it out with after implementation with the value realization story to follow up our pre-sales hypotheses. So I spend a lot of time in financial statements and investor reports, and we also have some great tooling in place to help guide our industry benchmarks and you know house our value framework to make sure that we're consistently developing business cases with the same value message. Back to the question of why it exists. So one answer is, is simply customer demand. So I've been brought up into several accounts where the customer is actually specifically asked if there's someone at DocuSign that could help with creating a business case. And it's something that CFOs and CIOs sometimes ask for when approving budgets. And I found that the most successful projects actually require it. And it's because the customer is already thinking about strategically what the KPIs are and what they're defining as a success. KPIs bring up a second reason for why VE exists with value selling really laying the groundwork of the quantifiable benefits the project will achieve. So it'll help provide that scope of a project from a different perspective. And we found that, you know, when we have those business cases, we're driving higher revenue deals that are closing faster with a happier customer. Thanks for walking through that. Thank you for walking about the what and the why. You said something about the value realization in the post-sale. And I think that really completes the full cycle. So can you talk a little bit about what that is and how it applies to a sales process? So I think we're straying a little bit away from the pre-sales motion because this is talking about post-implementation. I work with extended teams, including the AE and the SE and all of that in the pre-sales space. Post-sales in the value realization space, I'm partnering with the CSM, sometimes more of the extended account team. But the purpose of that is to make sure that we're completing the value selling motions throughout the entire customer journey. So we have a hypothesis that we started with pre-sales where we're saying, you know, we can save you X million dollars on this project based on the data that you and your team has provided to us. And then DocuSign is implemented. And then what, right? With your help, we can start quantifying the value that you've already seen and turning that story of, you know, the customer saying, we're really, really excited and happy with all of the benefits that DocuSign has provided and crafting that more into a quantifiable story. I'm glad you brought that up because I think this pre-sales term and pre-sales role is changing, right? If you look at a solutions engineer, a solutions consultant, in the past, they used to just be like new business, deal sold wash my hands, move on. But that full life cycle is starting to creep up more and more. So it's interesting to hear about what your role is in the pre-sale process, pre-signature, and then how it actually comes to fruition in the post-sale and you kind of close that loop. Customer journeys are more important than ever. So I appreciate you walking us through that. As we talk about like the nuances and the differences of this role, one of the things that I've heard from pre-sales collective members is asking if there's a difference in titles around value. So for instance, I've heard value engineering, value consulting, value advising. Are those different or are they essentially the same role? From a DocuSign perspective, I don't personally see a difference. I've heard from other teams that value engineering means that the person is both doing the value assessment 
and the technical and solutions assessment. While consulting and advising is limited to just the scope of value, but for me personally at DocuSign, we're called the value engineering or value management office. And my scope is driving the entire business value selling motion for the sales team. So I work closely with solutions engineers, but really focus on aligning that business value and strategic outcomes. Thank you for that. Because I don't know that there's much of a difference. It seems like maybe in a very select few companies, this role and this function is robust enough to have differences. But I think most of the companies that we talked to, as we mentioned, previous to recording, don't even have value engineering teams. And so this is a new space. And that's why we're doing this episode to kind of raise more awareness to this role and this function. I know there's a burning question for many people listening. How is this VE role different than a typical solutions engineer or solutions consultant? I actually got that question last week on the PSC Slack channel. Someone directly pinged me asking that exact question. So what I told them was that SEs show how the solution is valuable through demonstrating features and integrations and, you know, the entire solutions proposal package. While VEs on the other side show the business value that we can align with that solution, but in the scope of financial benefits and strategic and KPI alignment. So we're showing what the solution is actually worth quantifiably while the solutions engineer is driving the value story. So question for you, for people out there that say, hey, well, that's part of the SE's job. Do you have a perspective on that? We partner with SEs pretty closely and frequently. So there's no overlap in the roles. More so, it's SEs are setting the scene for how we're going to achieve value through the solution and secure the technical win. And I'm showing that in air quotes and realizing that people can't see this. One of our SC leaders calls it securing the technical win for the SC group. And then the VEs show how much that proposed solution is worth to the customer. So in that way, VEs are helping the customer identify business value, not just technical value. And we're both partnering to make sure that the customer is compelling and consistent and the best engagements that we have with customers are when the VEs and the SEs are going into discovery together and going into the proposal together. And we see that consistent success with our win metrics. Let's unpack that a little bit more. Can you talk to me about maybe a big deal engagement that you had recently and talk to me how you've partnered with the SC or SC throughout that process? So I I can't share customer names, but I am thinking of one account a couple of months ago where I had a really, really strong SE partnership. So we worked together to design an ultra customized point of view. So it was outside in to showcase the customer's proposed solution workflow. So the SE was in charge of mapping out the process flow diagrams for the before and after process of pre-DocuSign versus post-DocuSign. And I actually copied and pasted that process flow with an overlay of where the business values were coming from. So for example, there was a severe lag in the time to process an agreement and kick off subsequent workflows that we identified in our discovery with the customer. So the SE showed how our platform could integrate with the existing solutions and reduce friction in the process. And then I showed how much the productivity benefit was worth and how much it was worth to de-risk and accelerate that process. And the real outcome of that partnership was we were coming to the customer with a really consultative and prescriptive view that was consistent. So we're coming in with a message that that was easy to follow and the customer could really understand the value both technically and that aligned with them strategically. And then it was it was really easy for them to say yes to the deal. Glad that the deal went well. And I appreciate you walking us through that. In that type of situation, you're one value engineer and you partner with a number of SEs and SEs. What do the best SEs do when it comes to partnering with VE? Because I can imagine that there's some that do it very well. There's some that are still working through it. And there's some that might feel like, hey, this is my show. So can you maybe walk me through what a great partnership with your solutions engineer looks like? I don't think a great partnership is just limited to the SE and the VE working together. 
I think it also has to do with how we're both engaging with the customer and really making them feel part of the process of maybe having some impact in designing the solution or identifying what they want. And the big key to that successful engagement is discovery. So that's something that I, as a VE, really rely on the SE team to really hone in on is driving a successful discovery and making sure that the deal is real, that the customer is engaged, and then I can follow that up with, okay, let's quantify how much this is worth to you and put it in a pretty package that you can float up to your executives so they can't say no to you. And in that way, the SE and the VE are partnering to enable that internal champion at at the customer. So Kiana, when it comes to a sales cycle, there's always a lot of moving pieces. There's account executives, there's sales leaders, there's SEs, there's value engineers. When it comes to aligning with the customer and the customer persona, would you say that you're typically aligning with the CFO while maybe the SE or SC is aligning with the CTO and CIO? Or is it maybe a little bit different? We go to market together. So the SE and the VE, depending on the sales cycle, will be in the calls together just with a different lens. So the solutions engineer is looking at it from a technical lens. I'm looking at it with a value selling prescriptive lens. And it also depends at what we're putting together in terms of value messaging. So if I'm going to a C-level, it's because we put together an industry point of view based on the outside and perspectives, or we're presenting the final proposal. Typically, I'm not engaging with a C-level to put together the data collection templates and, and crafting that business case. There are exceptions, and I have discussed that with directors and above to get that together. And it's really, really important to have that executive sponsor. But usually, it's set those two bookends of the process that that we're discussing with C-levels. Thanks for walking us through that. Because again, for many people that are listening that aren't familiar with value engineering or how it works, I want to make sure that we're covering specifically what this role does, where it aligns... And how it all fits together. Because I think that's what this whole topic that we'll continue to touch on is value engineering and how it really fits into the cycle for those that aren't aware. One thing that you had told me in a previous conversation was this concept of how value selling helps sell more and faster. What did you mean by that? Because I didn't now unpack that at the time, but I'd like to do that now. Sure. So I think what I was getting at with that is hinting at our metrics that, you know, when we have an SC and a VE go to market together, we're selling a higher revenue deal and it's typically accelerated. But what it's ultimately coming down to is that it helps us sell more mindfully by using value selling as a way to demonstrate our interest and expertise in the customer's company values and their strategic initiatives and then their industry as a whole. So we're creating this more genuine and consultative and trusting relationship with the customer. And value selling is really about using those industry insights and strategic perspectives to help build credibility. And credibility equals trust. So when you're using that trust, you're able to more productively craft that business case and help them justify the investment in your solution and continue the relationship with a value lens through that customer life cycle that we were talking about from pre-sales through post-implementation. You know, it's so interesting when it comes to value because Zach Lowrick was on a pre-sales collective webinar at one point. And Zach's response was, value is everybody's job. And I absolutely agree with that statement, but I think it's very interesting in terms of how value expands. Value 1.0 versus value 2.0. And I love essentially what the role of having someone dedicated and specifically responsible for this value component instead of trying to add that to the SE or SE's plates. So I like how these roles play together. But I want to take a little bit of a step back. In terms of a step back, how do people get into this career? Your background, obviously, through Deloitte, is that very common? I would say maybe common, given that a lot of value engineers have a consulting background. I mean, I personally came from a very different role at Deloitte, and I actually studied accounting and information systems for my undergraduate. So from studying accounting, I was able to bring a strong 
understanding of financial statements and investor reports, the VE role. And then from Deloitte, I was able to bring the strengths of, you know, project management and dealing with multiple, multiple, multiple concurrent projects at once and being client and customer facing. But from that perspective, I wouldn't say that it's the only path to becoming a value engineer. It's something that I've been really reflecting back on as we're looking to expand our team. Our team exists to bring a new perspective to customers. So that's exactly what a good VE does, right? Is bring a different perspective. And I think it opens the door to diversity in our recruiting and making sure that the people that we're bringing in are backed with that strong analytical tendency, but that we're also empowering that creative energy that we're seeing in those candidates. Thanks for walking us through that. Because in pre-sales generally, we say that this role is the best role that no one's ever heard of. And nobody goes to college or university saying, hey, I want to be a solutions engineer. I want to be a value consultant at a software company or a hardware company. It just doesn't necessarily happen. And so creating awareness and creating diversity and creating diverse pipelines is how we build this into our DNA. And so I am excited to see that. And some conversations that you and I have had offline is, does the value community belong in the pre-sales collective? And I think we both agree that it does because this role is becoming important and it's becoming vital to many organizations. And so I'd like to just understand, for one, what your perspective is on VE falling in the pre-sales. Maybe talk about some of the trends that you've seen recently. And then what kind of community, if any, exists today for your type of role? So when it comes to trends, I'm personally seeing on my LinkedIn feed that there is this huge uptick in new value engineering teams coming up and a lot of job postings, including some at DocuSign and the value engineering team. And I do think that it's a really important thing to bring into the pre-sales collective conversation, mostly because VE at DocuSign, we slot under the SE org. There is that natural partnership. But also because the community is so powerful (laughs) for these niche groups where most people in the industry haven't heard of job titles like this. And it's just nice to have a community that actually knows what you do. And then you can move on from the what and, and really get into the content. But from an existing community perspective, one thing that I have been working on for the last couple of years is what we call a meeting of the minds recurring event. It's an event that has been hosted by DocuSign. Before my time, it was hosted as a really casual happy hour on our DocuSign Executive Briefing Center, where we had a lot of extended network of folks that were all generally in the value selling community together. And in the last year and a half since I joined, I, of course, for better or for worse, turned it into a more curated, formalized process or program where we have a recurring program of events and I'm still trying to preserve its roots as being an informal way for the community to connect. Now, you know, for the last year, it's been virtual, but we've had anything from happy hours where there's no agenda to having a keynote speaker by an author and Salesforce executive on how to make working from home work for you. We've had panels on tooling and automation and enablement and guest speakers on how to establish values and layers. And it's just this really cool experience to have a VE community around you in organizations other than just your own. So it's been really nice to get that perspective. One, congratulations on expanding the meeting of the minds and making it a little bit more formal. And I think people, again, love community and love connecting and sharing. That's why Presales Collective exists. But I am excited to see how Presales Collective and value professionals like yourself will continue to work together over 2021 and how Presales Collective will continue the conversations. It will be interesting to see. And I'm excited to talk to you next February 2020 and see what kind of changes happened over the year. So as we get to the end of the podcast, Kiana, I have to ask you one final question. What advice do you have for people who want to get into this value engineering type of role? I mean, my advice would be to take the informational call 
I almost did it. And I am so glad that I responded to that one LinkedIn message. But for unique career paths like this, I mean, it's really hard to just type in a Google search and get the exact answer that you're looking for of what the role is. So it's an amazing niche role that's worth learning about. So for me, it was saying yes to my now manager to talk more about what the role is. But for other people, it could be reaching out to VE leaders or recruiters and just trying to learn more. And I'll open the door here that I'm happy to respond to any PSC Slack messages if you do have any questions or want to chat more about what VE is. I appreciate that, Kiana. And I could feel your passion and it's amazing to see. And I think for those that are listening that have interest or know of individuals who have interest, utilize the pre-sales collective Slack. Like you mentioned, we created a channel called Role Value Engineering Value Consulting. And so individuals can definitely go in there, ask questions. Kiana, we appreciate you responding to the community as well. It's been awesome having you on the podcast. Thank you so much for walking through value engineering, value consulting, and how it plays into the pre-sales role. And I will see you next time. Thanks for having me, James. All right, pre-sales collective. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. Great hearing Kiana's perspective on value engineering and her path from Deloitte to DocuSign. This was a topic that was brought up to the Pre-Sales Collective about four or five months ago. A couple individuals said, hey, James, what are your thoughts on value engineering and value consulting? And I had a little bit of a perspective, but really not a point of view like I do now. What I have learned is this concept and topic exists in some companies, but is completely non-existent in others. There are some individuals who say, hey, that's our AE's job. Their job is the business value, the ROI, and articulating the business case. However, that might not be reality based off your sales process. And so we will continue to talk about value engineering, value consulting, what the role of a VE professional is versus the role of a solutions engineer, and talk about how this process is a continued iteration for the best possible customer experience. That's a topic we continue to talk about on the Pre-Sales Collective. You heard Kiana say it. She's part of the post-sale when it comes to value realization. Sales engineers in some companies stop at contract signature. But what we are learning and seeing is this common trend that we are involved in the whole life cycle. How much we're involved depends on the different companies. But this value engineering role, even solutions architecture type roles that are different from solutions engineers, these are topics and conversations we're going to continue to have. And so if you're a value professional or you work with value professionals, please ask them to join the Pre-Sales Collective Slack and join the value channel to start the conversation. We want to make sure that value engineering is a part of the Pre-Sales Collective and is part of our community. All right, Pre-Sales Collective, I hope you enjoy the episode. As always, please like and share the podcast. We want to continue to get the Pre-Sales Podcast out there. I will see you next week.